Hey learners, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Anam and here I have some specimens for you. I have a green leaf, a colored flower, another leaf but of different type and it has two different colors, dark green, light green and I have some seeds too. Although all these things comes from plant, you can clearly see that there are so many different colors in even in a plant and if you compare these structures with your skin color you will see that they are entirely different what questions comes in mind why the color of the leaf is green why the petals are of bright color or, or why the petals in this particular case is of purple color why two different colors why the seeds are having skin color or in other words, you can say it's colorless, not having a bright color or not a green color. This is all because of the presence of plastids. So, now you got it. Today's lesson is about structure and function of plastids. Plastids would come from Greek word plastos, which means formed or molded. It was first discovered by Ernest Haeckel. The plastids, they are double membrane bounded structures. If you remember my lesson about nucleus, we talked about the nucleus membrane is a double membrane bounded. It has inner membrane and outer membrane. Similarly, the plastids, they are double membrane bounded. It means they have one outer layer and one inner layer. Plastids, they are only present in plants or photosynthetic protists. For example, you can say that algae. Plastids are not present in animal cells. It, uh, it is only present in plant cells. This is one distinguished feature uh, between plant cell and animal cell. The plastids, they contain species specialized to perform different functions. For example, they can be used to perform photosynthesis or to give colors to the plant and also to store different substances. Now, if you remember here, I told that the meaning of plastos mean formed or molded. Why the plastid given this name? Why? Because of because of the way they are formed. The plastids, they are formed about 2 billion years before by the process of endosymbiotic relationship. Endo mean inside. Anywhere, even here or any other place, if you find the word endo, it means inside. So inside symbiotic relationship. The plastids, they are formed or they are molded because of the endosymbiotic relationship. About 2 billion years before, the cyanobacteria-like creatures Cyanobacteria are the organisms, they have the capability to, uh, to synthesize their own food by the process of photosynthesis. So about 2 billion years before, what happened that this cyanobacteria and this simple eukaryotic cell they combine together and do mean that this cell this cyanobacteria this goes inside the eukaryotic cell and then endosymbiotic relationship develop in which this cyanobacteria it resides inside the eukaryotic cell because the cyanobacteria they can produce their own food so they produce their own food and that food was utilized by this cell so this is the endosymbiotic relationship and as a result of this endosymbiotic relationship autotropic life comes into existence what is autotrophic life autotrophic mean auto means automatically that they can produce their own food they don't need to feed food or they don't need to get food from the external sources because of the presence of cyanobacteria which has the capability 
of producing their own food this cell here it becomes autotrophic in nature and with the evolution these cells converted into plants and we know that plants they can produce their own food they don't need any uh, uh, anyone else to give them the food or they don't need to get their food from external sources now coming towards the types of plasters there are main three types of plasters one is chloroplast the chloroplast is a green plastid why it is called green plastid because it gives a green color to the plant here if you remember this leaf this leaf has green color it means this green leaf has chloroplast in it what is the benefit of chloroplast for the leaves that they can photosynthesize photosynthesize means that they can prepare their own food the next one is chromoplast chromoplast are the plastids having bright colors if you remember the color of rose or sunflower you can see the rose color is red yellow uh, sunflower has yellow color they are the bright colors so what what is the benefit of having the bright color plasters the bright color plastid or chromoplast because they are present in the petals or the fruits what they are going to do they are going to help in the pollination and the dispersal of food what is pollination pollination is the transfer of seeds from the plant flower to other parts these other parts may be the flower of other plant not the same plant but the other plant or maybe uh, or it may travel from large distances and the fruits dispersal go uh, for example if you are eating a fruit or um, fruits are on the trees then because of the bright color because of the bright color animal is going to be attracted towards that fruit that animal will eat the fruit and then that seed is going to be dispersed to some other place and that helps in the generation or in the um, increase in the number of um, plants the third one is leucoplast the leucoplast they are actually colorless plasters they don't give colors to the uh, plants but they are very helpful in the storage of materials because of this property they are present in the roots or the seeds of the plants if you remember these seeds in these seeds the leucoplast is present now what they stores they store lipid they store protein they store carbohydrates and we know that when we sow the seed a new plant is generated why that new plant is generated because that seed has all these important substances stored in it so it is going to use their substances and a new plant it will be growing now altogether what is the function of plasters first function of plaster is photosynthesis as we have already discussed that what they are going to do green color chloroplast is going to capture the sunlight and that sunlight is going to be used for the synthesis of food that is why the word photo comes here like sunlight the second function is that light energy the light energy is captured by the plasters and it is converted into the chemical energy chemical energy is actually energy stored in the food the third function of plastid is that they uh, generates atp atp are actually the adenosine triphosphate or in other word you can say they are energy currency they are used to generate energy the fourth function is storage as we have already discussed here that they are going to store lipid protein 
and carbohydrates and these substances they can be utilized by the plants when needed the fifth function is the pollination and dispersal pollination of seeds and dispersal of seeds or fruits in this way it makes sure that the number of plants they keep on growing and this is one mechanism that plants have evolved for the survival to understand the structure of plastids let's take the example of chloroplast chloroplast we know that it provides leaf green color so let's talk about the structure in context of chloroplast the chloroplast has two membranes if you remember we talked about before that plastids they are double membrane bounded organelles one is outer membrane the other one is inner membrane they are also known as outer chloroplast membrane or inner chloroplast membrane the function of outer chloroplast membrane is that they allows small molecules to come inside and go outside the chloroplast because it is semi permeable so it will allow small molecules not the big one just small molecules so small molecules they can go in and they can go outside the chloroplast then comes the inner membrane the inner mem membrane it give rise to thylakoid sacs and it is continuous with this structure inner membrane it also controls the movement of molecules here we have thylakoid structure the thylakoid structure is like if you have for example if you have five coins and you place that coins one on each other then you are going to have a structure in which all the coins they are stacked on each other similarly here the thylakoids they have different thylakoid sacs they are stacked on each other and they are forming a particular structure which is known as granum the thylakoid they contains chlorophyll and chlorophyll is important for the photosynthesis the membrane of thylakoid structure is known as thylakoid membrane the thylakoid membrane contains all the internal substances including the chlorophyll which is a pigment and because of the chlorophyll the color of the leaf is green as we said the thylakoid they stacked on each other then they are going to form a particular structure which structure is known as granum granum is a singular word if you talk about all the thylakoid or all the thal uh, thylakoid uh, stacks it is known as grana grana is formed when about 10 to 20 thylakoids they are stacked on each other like that one thylakoid another thylakoid another another and another in this way this structure is known as granum the benefit of thylakoid as we know that chlorophyll is present and photosynthesis is takes place um uh, actually that chlorophyll presence of chlorophyll makes it a site suitable for the light reaction so light reaction it takes place inside the thylakoid 
sacs all these structures they are floating actually floating inside a liquid material which liquid material is known as stroma it is a liquid material and all the substances whether it is granum thylakoid or other substances this float in the stroma stroma is a site where the second step of photosynthesis takes place which is a kelvin cycle we will talk about these in our future lessons the amazing thing of chloroplast is that it consists of dna its own dna which is known as chloroplast dna this ct is the short form the for the chloroplast so it has different genes and these genes they can be used to produce different proteins or for the replication replication this it consists of ribosomes here you can see here the ribosome is very important we know that because of their uh, specialization in the production of proteins so in the chloroplast the ribosomes they can produce the proteins and cdna or ctdna which is the chloroplast dna because of its present some genes they are transcribed transcribed if you remember my uh, previous lesson that dna or some genes they are converted into mrna and this mrna is converted into protein so there is one misconception that uh, as we talk about before that endosymbiotic relationship takes place it uh, means that the cyanobacteria like organisms it gets inside into the eukaryotic cell and then uh, autotrophic life generates some things that this double membrane actually is one membrane or the inner membrane is of cyanobacteria and outer membrane is of the eukaryotic cell but this is a misconception both these layers they belongs to cyanobacteria and none of these uh, none of the layer is from the eukaryotic cell so that was all about plasters its type its function and its structure i hope you understand this lesson if you still have any question you can ask me in the comment section and please do subscribe and like my video and also hit the bell icon to keep updated thank you